Hello everyone, my name is Mikkel. I'm the owner of Real Life Renovations. Um, this is going to be a set of short videos for our Rhode Island renovation. We've already taken some photos and put them on the Facebook page. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity before we start construction to show you what this building looks like um, with the skin off on the inside. We've taken the lath and plaster off. Um, we're about to get ready to start uh, doing all the work inside, but I thought this was a, a unique opportunity to see a 1920s home um, bare bones, if you like. So I'm going to show you shortly some foundation stuff, and I want to take you upstairs and show you the balloon framing, some of the knob and tube wiring, some of the roof framing, and just some of the unique things that make this house different than a, uh, a, m a more modern home. Um, I wanted to show you some of the things that uh, traditionally we wouldn't be doing today, but just keep in mind that this house is 90 years old, and even though it's probably not quite up to code of modern times, um, it's in very good shape. The foundation is very solid, uh, there's not a lick of rot throughout the whole house, and uh, walls are still relatively plumb, so it says something to the traditional craftsmanship of, of, a, of an earlier time. So, so let's start with the basement down here. I just wanted to show you uh, a little bit of a cross section of, of how this is constructed, which is very different to how we would do it today with uh, concrete. Um, <clears throat> obviously the resources that we have today weren't available in those times, so they had to use more natural products. You can see in this shot here that the, the foundation is slate. They're basically big chunks of slate that have been mortared together and they're just sitting on the sand. So there's no footer here. We just The footer is the actual sand um, <coughs> which is probably a testament to why the foundation is in a fairly good condition because the sand allows any moisture there to drain away. So it's very dry um, and you can see here too that there's a transition from the slate to the brick. So we have the brick which is on edge here that's mortared along the top of the uh, slate portion of the foundation. And that actually is about a foot below exterior grade. Um, so you'll see here, I'm going to take the camera up and down the wall a little bit so you can see how the different levels interact with each other. Um, and we'll have a look at that wooden sill up there too. So bear with me, my camera skills aren't the same as my carpentry skills. So we see here, if you zoom in there, you can see there's a little hole that we've dug there, a little test hole to see what the condition of the um, floor slab was like. The slab is only like two and a half inches thick, where traditionally it would be at least four inches thick with insulation underneath it. You can see close to the center of the camera there's a, a stone there. It's a piece of slate. That's the bottom of the foundation and that's basically sitting on the sand and all the other um, behind the plaster there. As we can see up here is the slate there. So we have the probably four foot of slate as the main foundation wall which is holding back the pressure from the exterior um, exterior grade. And then we transition over to brick which is probably about another four foot up there. And then I want to show you how our wood silt sits on top. So let's go and have a look. You see here the, with the, if you can see behind the wires here, those wires are right in front of our, our wooden sill. It's about a 4x8 oak sill. And on top of that, look closely, you can see there's actually fire brick. So that brick has been put there on top of the wooden sill in between the studs so that if there is a fire down here, that we actually, the, the flames don't shoot up into the wall cavity and work their way to the roof. Because that is an issue with balloon framing. There's no stop between the first and second floors. The flames would just shoot right up and uh, end up at the roof. 
So you can also see how our floor joist here is notched over the wooden sill. Um, just the 2 by 8 um, rough cut lumber and I'm going to assume that we have oak here too. I've already taken one of the floor joists out and that was oak so it was pretty solid. And if we look a little further down here we can see here another view of what the slate is like and how that's been plastered. Um, a lot of the plaster at the moment is crumbling off we're actually going to be putting three and a half inches of foam over this so we'll need to do a little bit of repair work before we put the foam on and uh, then we'll have a lovely nice tight insulated basement down here okay so let's stop that now and then we'll uh, carry on shortly